There was no way to make it out in time, but he was able to place Goku in a fridge. Vegeta, what about you? Goku screamed. But then... What if... Goku... Was in... Okay, there's something you should know before the underground bunker blew up, so let's rewind. After Vegeta put Goku in the fridge, the former number one hero, Endeavor, came to save the day. He protected both Goku and Vegeta from the explosion with the power of his flames. However, in doing so, he sacrificed his own body to the explosion. And he couldn't completely protect Vegeta either. He would live, but he was terribly wounded. The only one who came out of that completely unharmed was Goku. Endeavor's last words were an apology to his grandson. He felt guilty for blaming Goku for things he had no control over, like Shoto's death. And he hoped that Goku wouldn't feel guilty about his death because it wasn't his fault. However, that message would fall on deaf ears. Seeing as he was the only person who came out of that situation without being damaged, he felt as if there was no one to blame but himself. With Vegeta off in a hospital, Goku was once again all alone. When word of Endeavor's death got out, people started to fear Goku and cursed him as a demon child. It seemed like wherever he went, death swiftly followed. First his parents, then Shoto, now the beloved Endeavor. People begun to distance themselves from him even further, so he was truly alone. He was put in his uncle's, Natsuo's custody. He was always off on business trips, so he essentially just left Goku all by himself in a big, empty house. With his resolve completely shattered, he gave up on his mission. He couldn't even remember what he was fighting for. He tried to return his life back to normal by going back to school, but nothing could ever be quite the same again. It would be a few months after the bunker incident until Vegeta saw Goku again. When he did, he noticed that Goku was in a sad state. Vegeta was anxious to get back out there and continue the search for All for One. Even though Goku had nothing left to lose, Vegeta still had plenty. His parents and his little brother were all being held hostage by All for One, and he wanted to save them. Despite his friend's request, Goku still did not want to go because he believed that he would make the situation worse. What if he goes and then All for One decided to kill the hostages? While they are imprisoned, at least they are still alive. Goku couldn't handle all of the death and he honestly wasn't even sure if he wanted to be a hero anymore. Vegito argued that this was bigger than the hostages. Who knows what All For One was planning? They can't just let him have his way because that would eventually lead to more death and destruction in the future. Then all of a sudden, the environment changed around them. Goku and Vegeta somehow ended up in a random field, and in that field with them, there were many other people who looked just as confused as they were. Dinosaurs then showed up out of nowhere and started to have a feast. There was blood and death everywhere as the dinosaurs attacked and Goku couldn't do anything about it. As soon as he tried to fight back, he was suddenly back in his own home with Vegeta. They were both very confused. Maybe it was just a weird hallucination. Vegeta turned on the TV only to find out that they weren't the only one to experience this. The whole town disappeared and reappeared a few minutes later. No one knew quite what happened, but Goku and Vegeta had somewhat of an idea. It was Tarbul's quirk. They weren't sure of what it could do, but now they were confident that they knew. His quirk must be time travel, and that's why they were in a time of dinosaurs for a brief moment. If All For One could get Tarbul to master this ability, who knows what he would use it for? Goku couldn't save those innocent people from the dinosaurs, so if he did nothing, people would definitely die, and there wouldn't be anything Goku could do about it. With this newfound resolve, Goku joined Vegeta to continue their mission to take out All For One. It seemed as if the duo had to start their search for All For One from scratch. With the underground bunker destroyed, it seemed as if there was no possible way to track him. However, Vegeta had another lead, his uncle. He routinely had to report back to All For One. If anyone knew where All For One was hiding, it had to be him. And considering the time travel incident that occurred, they probably weren't far from here. Now the main problem will be tracking down the uncle. Since All For One knew Vegeta was a traitor, he probably already told Tensei Ida. 
therefore it would be difficult to make him meet up willingly and ambush him. Despite that, it could still be possible to catch him. If All For One knew that Vegeta was alive, then he'd want him taken out as soon as possible. Since All For One doesn't have many allies right now, he would either do it himself or send Tensei to do it. So in order to draw him out, Vegeta needed to make his presence known. And doing that would actually be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Since the public had always been curious about the disappearance of Ingenium in Kreati, when Vegeta said he'd do a public press conference to explain the details, it became a big deal. Major news organizations were going to be there as it was a very popular event. Moments before this press conference started, Tensei came out of nowhere and tried to attack Vegeta. Tensei wasn't aware that it was all planned, so he didn't realize Goku was standing by waiting for him to show up. As soon as he did, Goku used his muscular form to quickly punch and knock him out. The conference, of course, got cancelled, but the objective was accomplished. Vegeta and Goku took Tensei back to the Todoroki house where he would be questioned. Tensei woke up with a frightened look on his face. He was confused until he remembered what had happened. He failed in his mission. He told Vegeta that he never planned to kill him. He just wanted to keep Vegeta hidden from All for One before he killed him. Tensei said that he would never kill his nephew. If he was forced to kill his family, then what would be the point of working for all for one? Vegeta wanted to trust them, but he needed more than that. Then suddenly the restraints on Tensei broke off and he touched Vegeta's arm. Goku's instincts quickly took over and he pinned Tensei to the ground. Tensei apologized for the shock, but he hoped that doing that would help them gain his trust. Goku and Vegeta were very confused, so they asked him to explain what he meant by that. Tensei told the boys that all for one gave him another quirk. This quirk allowed him to heal his spine by disassembling and reassembling it. It was a quirk formerly held by Kai Chisaki. It's called Overhaul. By breaking out of the ropes and touching Vegeta, he proved that he could have killed him right then and there, but he didn't. He could have killed Goku too when he charged him, but he didn't do that either. He hoped this was enough proof that he genuinely didn't want to hurt any of his family or friends, and it was. Tensei knew where All For One and Tarbo were, but he had no idea where Ingenium and Kreati were. With them as hostages, he couldn't take Tarbo and escape without facing harsh consequences. Even though Vegeta was a little annoyed by it, he completely understood the predicament that he was in. Vegeta had faith that if the three of them worked together, they could take down All For One and stop his nefarious schemes. Before they left, Goku asked Tensei if he knew anything about All For One's plan with Tarbo's time traveling quirk. First, Tensei clarified that it was not a time traveling quirk. He didn't know the true nature of the quirk himself, but he did know that it transported people to alternate dimensions or universes. He heard that All For One wanted to use Tarbo to pull other versions of himself from different universes in hopes that together, they could dominate the multiverse. However, Tarbo was having difficulty mastering his abilities, so it had been taking a while. Once Tarbo learned about All For One's plans, he refused to cooperate. However, All For One had ways of forcing him to use his quirk. He created a machine that would connect All For One's quirk and Tarbo's quirk in hopes of being able to accurately locate other versions of himself across multiple timelines. Tensei had no idea if this machine would work or if it was even close to completion, but he was definitely aware of this plan and where it was taking place. All For One set up at Endeavor's abandoned hero agency in the months after the underground bunker was blown up. With his location known, Goku, Vegeta, and Tensei all moved out in hopes of stopping All For One together. The trio made their way to the abandoned hero agency together. The inside looked completely normal, but there was a hidden elevator that would take them down to a secret laboratory. And in that lab, there was a machine that looked like a gateway, and Tarbo was connected to it. All For One must have been using his body to make portals to other dimensions. As the trio went to save Tarbo, All For One got in the way and told them all no matter what they did now, they wouldn't be able to stop what was coming next. In the fit of rage, Goku jumped and attacked All For One, who was much weaker than he expected him to be. The legendary figure was supposed to be a master of quirks, yet he was being beaten so easily. All For One was a shell of his former self. He had been beaten by One For All so many times that he no longer enjoyed the power he once had. That was one of many reasons as to why he wanted the assistance from other timeline versions of himself. While Goku was beating All For One to a pulp, no one noticed that he was discreetly using his quirk to activate the machine. Once it got started, it was too late to stop it. Goku attempted to destroy the entrance while Vegeta and Tensei attempted to pull Tarbo out. However, it seemed as if there was an electric barrier that prevented any interference. Goku went back to All For One and demanded him to tell him how to turn the machine off. And All For One just laughed. Goku proceeded to break his fingers, yet All For One continued to laugh. The portal then appeared, and three figures walked through the machine. 
like and subscribe for part four.